Hello, this is Pastor Bruce Wilder, and I'm so happy to be with you parents and young people as you're preparing for your first communion this coming Thursday, uh, Monday Thursday, which means Holy Thursday, the Holy Day, the Holy Thursday, when we remember Jesus first celebrating his supper, the Lord's Supper, with his disciples. And before we go into my short lesson, I'd like for you to uh, pray with me. The Lord be with you. Lord God, I thank you for these parents, guardians, grandparents who are continuing to disciple their children and grandchildren. I thank you for their faithfulness in fulfilling the vows that were made in holy baptism, that they would raise these children in the knowledge of the Lord, that they would bring them to the services of God's house, that they would teach them the word, which is Jesus, and so bless them as they are fulfilling these holy promises. And I pray for all these boys and girls preparing to receive their first communion. Uh, help them to continue growing in faith, in wisdom, and in knowledge of you, the God and Father of us all. And I ask these things in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Well, one of the things that people often say when it comes to Holy Communion is that the bread and the wine is merely a symbol, that it's not really the body and the blood of Christ. And I want you to think for a minute about symbols. Um, symbols are symbolic. They are not the uh, real thing. A symbol only represents something. So when people are saying that this bread and this wine are just symbolic, they're saying that, well, Jesus really has nothing to do with it. He's not really here in this meal. He's certainly not with us in, with, and under these gifts of bread and wine. So let's think about symbols and calling communion merely a symbol. Boys and girls, do you ever remember having a nightmare or being scared in the middle of the night and uh, wanting your mom or your dad to simply comfort you? I know that happened when I was a boy. And when I had uh, a nightmare, I wanted my mom and dad to let me, you know, crawl into bed with them and tell me that it's okay, that it was just a dream. And I needed and wanted uh, to hear them say, I love you. It's going to be all right. Well, what if the next time you have a nightmare and you stand at the doorway to your parents' bedroom, they said, well, here's a symbol. Now, go back to bed with this symbol and don't bother us anymore. Now, what's this a symbol of? It's a heart and it's a symbol of love, right? But if your parents merely gave you a symbol of love, that's not the same thing as them hugging you and telling you everything's going to be all right because we're here for you and we love you. A symbol isn't the same as the real thing, is it? I remember when I was a boy, my dad was in the army. We moved 21 times by the time I turned 18. And uh, we'd be on these long road trips and we'd get so hungry. And we would look forward to my dad finally pulling the car over where we could stop and get something to eat. Our favorite was McDonald's. Now, if you were hungry and traveling with your family and your parents said, oh, you're hungry? Really, you need some food? Well, here, have this symbol. Now, would that satisfy your appetite? Would this fill your belly? It's just a symbol for McDonald's restaurant, right? It's not the real thing. This symbol can't take away your hunger. It can't fill your belly. It can't give you nourishment. So a symbol, once again, is basically artificial. It's not real. You could even say it's fake. And now we're finally through winter. And I know that I'm enjoying seeing all of the trees starting to uh, have their, uh, their blossoms come out, the flowers are growing, uh, the grass is getting greener. And in the middle of winter, how would you feel if when you're looking forward to the sunshine and the longer days of spring, someone said, oh, you want to enjoy spring? Well, you can stay in your room. And here's a symbol of spring, a beautiful flower that just came out of the ground and opened. I mean, this is a pretty sketch of a flower, but it's not a real flower. It's only symbolic. And so Jesus does not come to us simply uh, symbolically. 
Jesus says that he's really with us. Now let's turn to the word of God and see what Jesus has to say to us. This is in Mark's gospel. And if you'd like to get your Bibles and study this tonight, that would be just great. But I want you to look with me in the 14th chapter of the gospel of Mark. And I'm beginning at verse 22. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. It's not a symbol. And then he took a cup and he gave thanks and gave it to all of them. And he said, This is my blood which is poured out for many. This is not a symbol of my blood. This is my blood. Now, we know, we know that when we have communion, when we receive the sacrament, it tastes like bread. And it tastes like wine, or it tastes like the juice that some of you might be having until you get older. But our God is a great God, and he can do Whatever he wants to do, because he is the Lord of creation, he's not bound by time or space. I mean, Jesus was able to walk on water. Have you ever been able to done that? do that? You know, when we try to walk on water, we sink. Um, there was a blind man by the pool of Siloam, and Jesus healed him of his blindness. But do you know how he did it? Uh, Jesus took some dirt and he spit and made a little mud, and he rubbed it on the man's eyes. Can you imagine that? If you're eye doctor, if anyone did that to you? And then he said, go now wash your eyes in the pool of Siloam. And when the man washed that mud out of his eyes, he could see. You see, Jesus can do whatever he wants to do with creation. He can heal a blind man with a little bit of mud and his word. And so in communion, Jesus takes these ordinary elements of bread and wine and does with them what he chooses because he has the power and he has the authority. And so we Lutheran Christians have rightly said that in this meal, it's a great mystery that Jesus comes to us in, with, and under these earthly elements of bread and wine. And we can trust Jesus because his word is truth. And that's the second thing I want you to spend some time thinking and praying about tonight with your families. Now, when I teach this class here at the church, I have all the children up front, and then I have all the parents and grandparents in the back. And I'll say to them, now, boys and girls, if you've ever told a lie, I want you to raise your hand. And the children get kind of upset, like, oh, Pastor Bruce. You're going to make me admit that right here and now in front of all these people, in front of my parents? I said, go ahead. If you've ever lied, raise your hand. And then they put their hands in the air. All the hands go up because everyone's told a lie. And then I say, now, boys and girls, I want you to turn around and look at the parents and grandparents in the room. And I say to all the grown-ups, now, if you've ever told a lie, I want you to raise your hands. And all the grown-ups put their hands up, and the boys and girls are, You too? You've said things that weren't true? You haven't always been honest? And then I say, wait for this. I want any pastors in the room to raise their hands if they've ever told a lie. i got to put my hand up, because I remember long ago, Sometimes I would make up a story to get out of trouble. I wouldn't always tell the whole truth. That's just one of the many, many differences between all of us and Jesus. Jesus never tells a lie. Jesus is never dishonest. Jesus never deceives us. In the Gospel of John, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So when Jesus says, this is my body, this is my blood, we can trust it 
because he is trustworthy. Jesus is no liar. Jesus is completely truthful and honest with us in all things. And then lastly, and maybe this part of my lesson is uh, for the older folks who are listening right now. You know, we have many brothers and sisters in Christ who belong to different congregations and different denominations who tell us that, you know, there's no way that Jesus can come uh, to his people truly present in bread and wine. And I have often had conversations with some of those pastors and theologians from different church bodies and said, well, tell me, tell me why you have such an unwillingness to accept that Jesus could do this. He's God. He's the Word made flesh. Well, it's simply impossible, Bruce. Jesus can't do that. It's impossible. Really? Read Genesis, the first chapter. God said, let there be light, and there was light, and it was good. God created the earth, the heavens, the stars, the seas. God created every creature. With a word, God can do what he wants to do because he is God. It's not impossible for him. And then we celebrate every Christmas that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. The Virgin Mary. Some would say that's impossible, but it's not impossible for God. The Holy Spirit came upon Mary. And she became with child, the living Christ, fully human and fully divine at the same time. At Easter, this coming Sunday, we're going to celebrate that after Jesus was crucified and died a real death and was placed in the tomb, that he was raised. He was raised back up, alive. I think some people would say, well, that's impossible too. But it's not impossible for God because he has defeated death and his authority is greater than the power of sin and death. You look at all the miracles of Christ in the New Testament. We already mentioned the blind man by the pool of Siloam walking on water. Lazarus, the brother of Mary and Martha in Bethany, was dead and Jesus raised him and gave him new life. He reunited uh, those sisters with their brother who had died of a terrible illness. So those who say that Jesus cannot come to us in communion have a really um, small idea of who God is and what he can do. And they're not really thinking about the full witness of Scripture from Genesis to the New Testament where Christ has authority. He can calm a storm. He can heal a leper. Jesus is able to take bread and wine and make it not just a snack and not just a symbol, but to give us himself, his love, his mercy, and to fill us all with the power of his resurrection. So God bless you all this Holy Week. I want you to spend some time thinking about symbols and the real thing. And I hope that you um, will listen to our online service. Watch the video that's going to be provided this Monday, Thursday, as you celebrate your first communion with the entire congregation that will be celebrating communion in their own homes. So, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.